Hey, what's up everyone? Bill Lethman here for Money Evolution. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about five things that you need to understand when it comes to your income taxes. So income taxes, once again, are part of our big four expenses that we talk a lot about. And for most people, your income taxes are probably one of your biggest expenses. So making sure that you understand what's going on there, I think is gonna be a huge deal for your overall long-term financial success. So in this video, we're gonna be talking, like I said, about five big things that oftentimes get uh, misunderstood when it comes to our taxes. So number one is going to be that we have what's called a progressive tax system. So what that means is that um, you're incrementally going to be taxed at higher tax rates as your income goes up. So one of the things that I hear all the time when it comes to our income taxes is, hey, if I go into that next tax bracket, that's going to really be bad. Uh, I'm going to have to pay all this extra tax. Well, in reality, you're only paying that higher tax rate on the amount of your income that goes into that next tax tax bracket. So for example here, let's say that you're a married couple filing a joint tax return for 2018, you can make up to $77,400 and still be in the 12% tax bracket. Uh, if you make $1 more, you're going to be going into the 22% tax bracket. So that's a huge jump. But remember, you're only paying that 22% percent on the one dollar that exceeded that previous tax bracket. So that's something that a lot of people uh, just may not always be aware of there. Uh, number two is a big one, is that your tax rate when you're looking at your income taxes and filing your return does not include FICA taxes or your Medicare taxes. So uh, this is a big one because even if you're uh, maybe at a lower income level, maybe you're just out of school, you're getting your first job uh, and starting to make some money, uh, you may go, why, you know, why am I paying all of this taxes? Well, in 2019, on the first $132,900 of your income, you're going to have to pay what's referred to as FICA tax or Social Security tax at 6.2%. Uh, on top of that, uh, you're also going to pay 1.45% for Medicare taxes as well, and there's no cap on your Medicare. So even if you're making $200,000, dollars $500,000, you're paying that 1.45% of Medicare tax on that full amount. So uh, be aware of that. And if you're self-employed, uh, because normally your employer pays the other half of those FICA taxes, the other 6.2%, uh, if you're self-employed, you're going to have to pay both sides of that. So 12.4% uh, for self-employment tax in that situation. Uh, number three on the list is a big one here, is that you're uh, your payroll deductions and your tax refund or the amount that you owe are not your real taxes. So oftentimes when I talk to people about this and I say, um, you know, how, how are your income taxes? And they said, oh, no, we got absolutely hammered last year on our taxes. Um, well, why was that? Well, because we ended up owing $2,000 to the IRS. Well, uh, when we look at it closely, you know, that is not maybe necessarily the true picture. On the uh, flip side of that, we talked to a lot of people say, hey, we're doing great. We got back $1,000 refund last year, uh, again, that's not your true taxes. So what you're going to want to do after you file your income tax return, or you can do this for previous years, is you're going to look on page two of your 1040 form, if you're using that form, and you're going to see uh, about a third of the way down the page, your total taxable uh, income and your total tax that you paid. Uh, the amount of refund or the amount that you're uh, owing is, is just kind of a reconciliation that you're going to do with the IRS at the end of the year. Uh, so if you get a refund back, essentially what that means is that you paid the IRS too much money during the year and they're going to give you some of that money back. And if you end up owing, that means you didn't pay them enough money throughout the year, and then you owe them a little bit more money at the end. So uh, keep that in mind. And the amount that actually comes out of your paycheck, uh, they're going to try to get that as close as possible. You're going to put your exemptions in when you fill out uh, some of your paperwork at your employer. But again, you know how much is actually deducted may not necessarily be the real uh, deal either when it comes to your taxes. Uh, number four is I want to talk about two uh, tax terms here, your marginal tax rate and your effective tax rate. Right. So your marginal tax rate is what we were talking about uh, at the first one, and that is uh, what is the tax rate that you're going to be paying on each additional dollar of income? In other words, what tax bracket are you getting into? So if you creep up into that 22% tax bracket, even by $1, your marginal tax rate would then be at that 22%. That means if you earn another $10,000 of income, it's going to be taxed at that 22% level. Uh, your effective tax rate is if you took all of your income and you divided that uh, into the amount of tax that you are paying, uh, that is going to give you an average or effective tax rate across 
all of your income, and that's going to be usually much lower, or will be much lower than your marginal tax rate. So that's saying on all of our income, that is the amount of tax that we pay. That's the effective tax rate. So it's important to understand that, I think. And then, uh, and then finally, the last thing is not all of your income is going to be taxed at the same rate. Uh, and this is where things can get a little bit confusing. In fact, I talked about this a little bit more in depth in one of my other videos. It's uh, how your retirement asset allocation could cost you unnecessary taxes. Uh, so it's most mostly about kind of where to save money for retirement, but I did a really nice breakdown where I talked about uh, interest income versus uh, 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 ordinary uh, dividends and, and qualified dividends and things like that. So uh, just to give you an idea, so you have what we call your ordinary income tax. That's going to be something very important. That's where any money that's going to come in at an ordinary income tax rate is going to be applied to that tax schedule. That's going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate. Things like your uh, income from your employer uh, is going to be part of that. If you have any short-term capital gains, or was you bought and sold something and a profit, and you did that within without holding that asset for at least 12 months, that's going to be a short-term capital gain. That's going to be taxed at your ordinary income rate. Uh, interest payments. So if you get interest from a CD or from a bond, that's generally going to be taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. And that's what we kind of refer to as the uh, the worst of that. Uh, one other thing is distributions from IRA accounts. If they're traditional IRAs, those are also going to be taxed at your ordinary income tax tax rate. Um, Social Security, I want to just talk about that for a moment because I know a lot of people watching this might be uh, retired or maybe approaching retirement. Uh, and I did a video on this too here recently where I talked about uh, how your Social Security benefits are taxable, but up to 85% of your Social Security benefits are subject to tax. So that's going to be another category there. And then we have some tax advantage uh, types of things that we can get income from. So um, municipal bonds generally are going to be uh, federally tax-free, uh, is you know, as long as they meet certain qualifications. So, uh, so that's a tax-free category. Qualified dividends, like I talked about, that's going to be taxed generally for most people watching this at a maximum 15% uh, tax rate. If you're in the highest tax bracket, that could be up as high as 20%. You could also get hit with a Medicare surtax. So things get a little complicated there, but qualified dividends and also Long-term capital gains are both going to be what we refer to as tax-advantaged income, uh, tax for most people probably watching this at a 15% tax rate. So, uh, so there you have it. There's five things that hopefully you're going to walk away with some information about your taxes, uh, a couple things to look out for when you go to look at your tax return. And uh, anyway, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you got some good information out of it. And uh, remember, hit that like or subscribe button, and I'll see you back in my next video. Thanks.